During the past six years of field studies on centenarians who live in the Spice Mountains of southwestern India, several enigmas have been explored. This mini-documentary profiles two supercentenarians. Both belong to a protected tribe known as Kani. Bhagavan Kani, aged 115, is a spiritual leader of this tribal group. He lives in a modest hut by himself on top of a hill. 11 of his 13 children, 35 grandchildren, 85 great-grandchildren, and many great-great-grandchildren live in and around him. Bhagavan depends on fruits and vegetables from his surroundings. Occasionally, family members bring him meals, but for the most part, he is self-sufficient. He spends his time collecting unique objects of different shapes and sizes from the mountain area and makes his own unique garlands. He enjoys wearing these creations and making different walking sticks. Bhagavan applies ashes from dry leaves and seeds on his forehead after his daily prayer. Bhagavan's daily routine comprises of getting up early in the morning, much before sunrise, eating a light breakfast comprised of dry fruits and vegetables. He enjoys sitting with the youngest members of his family and telling them stories from his childhood. Bhagavan walks to the nearby hill where he has installed several of his deities for which he performs spiritual rituals. Once a month, the tribal community comes around to this place of worship for special rituals. All of them bring food to this occasion to share with others. This place is utilized not only for prayer, but also for all forms of healing practices. Bhagavan is the head healer for this tribal community. Several of his grandchildren and other tribal members testified to the fact that Bhagavan heals people with different ailments. He uses leaves, barks, roots and seeds of several spice plants from the mountains for healing purposes. He also uses long rituals utilizing verbal and nonverbal expressions as part of his healing practices. These healing secrets are not revealed to anyone. He is willing to share his healing secrets only if he is able to build a trusting relationship. Bhagavan claims he is yet to find such an individual. Sadly, this lack of trust results in a dying practice of these healing rituals. His outlook on life is extremely positive. People around him find it easy to build trust with him. Bhagavan talks about living not only for the here and now, but also for many years to come. He has many future dreams in place, one of which is to officiate the wedding of his three-year-old great-great-granddaughter. At the age of 115, he continues to have a very sharp memory and remembers different and precise life events of his family and the local tribal people. Bhagavan is a very creative and imaginative person. He dreams of continued happiness for his tribal people and for mankind to respect their environment, water, fire, air, sun, and the moon. He climbs hills at ease as a warm smile for all.
Our second centenarian, Mati Mutu, is 110 years old. She also lives in the Spice Mountains. She is surrounded by eight of her children, 45 grandchildren, and several great grandchildren, and a few great great grandchildren. Mati always smiles and projects a positive disposition to life. Nine years ago, the Academy of Folk Arts awarded her with several honors for composing and singing several tribal songs. All her songs' themes center around respecting one's own environment. She is always willing to share her musical talents and practice wisdom with others. She enjoys dressing up with nice clothes, earrings, necklaces, and bangles. She is very proud of her physical appearance and remains young at heart. According to her relatives and neighbors, Mati possesses many healing powers. By the power of the healing touch and reciting prayers to deities, she is able to heal different ailments. Mati is willing to share these healing powers with others freely. One of the challenges of good field studies among the supercentenarians of the Spice Mountains is to validate their ages. No government birth certificates are available for this elder population. Secondary evidence has been investigated to validate their age, including testimony from local political and community leaders. While people touch their feet for a blessing, these supercentenarians' frail, century-old hands caress their head with a prayer on their lips. Some of the commonalities of these two supercentenarians include spirituality, a positive outlook on life, unique dietary habits, different ways to enrich senses, willing to share positive vibes with others. A smiling face, a healing touch from generations past to generations ahead.